12th grade, it was like a punch in the face. It was a lot of work that was too much for a lot of students. So the 6th through 10th grade year is what we call the middle years program. And what's that desi what that's designed to do is to slowly grow the skills that the students are going to need for when they get to 11th and 12th grade. And we're really focused on the test because it's really easy to talk about. But it's not just taking these tests. It's to become an educated, well-rounded individual. Um, if you look, and Ivy loves its different geometric shapes. But at the center here is the child. And around this is the Ivy learner profile, that set of nine characteristics that I talked about before that just make a well-rounded, intelligent, educated individual. So it always comes back to that at the center. If you look around this, they have five what are called areas of interaction. And the areas of interaction are lenses that we teach our units through. Here at the school, we don't teach chapter six. We teach a bigger themed unit. So I didn't, when I'm teaching Japanese, I don't teach chapter six, I teach Japanese families. And so it's not just from the textbook, it's pulling all types of things together. And at the same time, each unit that we do has one of these themes, whether it's health and social education, community and service, human ingenuity, approaches to learning or environments. And every time we teach a unit, we look at it through that lens. So like when I do my unit on the family, I'm talking about health and social education. So students can describe families, can describe themselves, can talk about their lives based on what's going on you know, in, in their family. Every class does this. So just as I do a unit with health and social education, they do a unit like that in math. They do a unit like that in art. They do a unit with that theme in all eight classes that the students take to help students begin to see that knowledge isn't this discrete set of individual pieces of knowledge, it's all tied together. And so we're asking similar types of questions. One of the questions that we describe in self and health and social education is the question, who am I? I'm, I'm a resident of Pittsburgh, and I'm a person of a family of five, and I do this. And if you're answering the question, who am I that way in Japanese, they answer it differently in art class. Who am I? I am the person who likes this, and this is my expression of myself through the mandala that I made. It's the coolest project I've ever seen. And, you know, and so all of these things, so you begin to see that all of this knowledge is connected. So that's the one thing that happens. And because of this idea that all knowledge is connected, we spend a lot of time here going back and tying what we do in one class with another class. And it happens on all different levels. At the Pittsburgh Public Schools, one of the units that all students have to do in seventh grade is called stretching and shrinking. And so when you stretch and you shrink, like how does the object change? What happens to the area? The circumference, all this stuff. Fascinating stuff. Um, all of these things. What happens here is the traditional unit is just, oh, you do this, here's the calculations, you're done. At Obama, students just create their own logo for the school. They then plot that logo on a computer program. They have the computer program manipulate the logo, but it's not just putting it into the computer. They still have to be able to describe what is happening mathematically to that. So all of a sudden, they've taken something that was just an abstract math equation, and they've applied it to technology. They've applied it to art. They've put all these things together so that when they have to go deep into the Cold War in 11th and 12th grade, they have the skills to do that. So, And this helps with all of these areas of interaction that go there. Um, another example is my daughter in sixth grade, one of the things that they were learning was the properties of numbers, primes, and factors, and all of these other things. And so the knowledge was given there, just like you know, you have that test, it's like, okay, what are the factors of this number, what are the factors of that, which is prime, which is not. But then when it was all said and done, she had to stand up in front of the class and say, my number is 99. It is not a prime number because it has factors. Here are the factors. It is a, I believe it's called a Capricor number, because if you add the digits together and then manipulate it some way, this is what happens. And that was something that she found out on her own with her research. So all of a sudden, this very abstract thing, because who really knows why you need prime factor? You know, I know they're necessary for you know, computer stuff, but like, it was never explained to me. But all of a sudden, she was forced to use that in a way that was a little more hands-on, that kind of, and it encouraged her to be able to express herself. You know, when they were doing all of the areas of geometric shapes and pi r squared and 2 pi r and all that stuff, she didn't just get the formulas and then figure out the formulas in a worksheet. And she did that, so she got the base practice to do that. But then when she was done, she had to redesign the park across the street, figure out how much mulch she'd need, figure out how much fencing she'd need, and then write a letter to Mayor Ravenstahl explaining why her park design was good. So again, it wasn't just math for math's sake. And to, so the teacher can go, correct, 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 100%, very good. You know, it was, hey, I like the point you made in that essay. Yes, writing in math class. Yes, writing in art class. All of our art students have a developmental workbook. And what happens is, it's not like, oh, here's a paper, start drawing, have at it. 
You go, before you begin any project, the art teacher has you research. What influences are going into this? What artists are influencing you? What pieces are influencing you? And you put it in your workbook. And you get examples in your workbook. And then you make a mock-up of what you want to do. And you evaluate. You're like, wow, that really is not good. Okay, I've got to change something here. And you go back and you design it. And then you talk about what you've done. And once you finally create your piece of art, you've got to be able to explain, I really like this because. So we're working on not just these discrete skills, but on tying everything together. And it all goes back to this. On the outside of this are the eight classes that students take here. Um, English at the top, language A. Humanities, which are your social studies classes. Technology. And again, technology <coughs> is not just, oh, here's the undo button. Oh, here's how you use Microsoft Word. It's using technology to create something, to come up with an end product. And again, you've got to work through it and design it and reevaluate it and change it and go back to it again. So it's not just, again, the knowledge of how it works, but how to manage deadlines, how to get this project done, because you have some time in class, but you still got to be able to work on it at home, and you've got to do all these other things together. Um, mathematics, um, the arts, all of our students take an art every year, whether it be visual or music. When they get into ninth and 10th grade, they have a little more flexibility with what they can choose in 6th, 7th, and 8th. They are assigned to different classes. Everyone will take visual arts and music over their time here so that they're exposed to that, so that they have a chance to learn some more about themselves and have then be better able to appreciate what happens in Mr. Dreamin's film class because they have some idea about artistic composition and how it's all put together. Um, the sciences, physical education, and language be uh, the world language. Every student here takes a language every day. There's always a language class every day. And again, the goal is so that when you're done, you have an ability with it. We don't let people change. Mr. Eamon learned a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Portuguese. I learned a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of German, and I read Latin really well. I wasn't, didn't learn a foreign language until I went to Japan and had to use it to actually get some food. All right. So then all of a sudden, I was a good language learner. It didn't happen beforehand. So what that means is that when your child is finished, they are going to have a skill that sets them apart from pretty much everyone else in America, because no one values it here in this country as they should. But when they're finished, they're going to be able to use that to communicate in a meaningful way with other people. And so you have that if you're coming in in sixth grade all the way through. Um, so yeah, to help support what needs to get done then in the diploma program, we have a few things in place here as well. You have to do 150 hours of service, action, and creativity to get that diploma. Here, all of our students keep what's called a SAC booklet, which stands for Service, Action, Creativity, and Knowledge. In sixth through tenth grade, excuse me, sixth through eighth grade, Students every year have to do 10 hours of service, 10 hours of action, and 10 hours of creativity, and log it in their SAC books. And again, it's 30 hours over the course of a year. What we found is that um, a lot of people are great. I've seen books that have like 700 hours of action because they're on the volleyball team and the swim team and something else, and just the bare minimum of service. And again, when you get to the diploma, you can do everything in one because they really want you to focus. We encourage students to kind of broaden out a little bit so that at this place, so that they get to experience things because, you know, you don't really know everything you think you know when you're in sixth grade or even tenth grade, and so this forces people into experiences that they might not otherwise have. In ninth and tenth grade, it's 20 hours of service, 20 hours of action, and 20 hours of creativity. And again, you log it, you have people sign for it, so it not only prepares you to do that 150 hours, but because you have people logging and signing, when you need references, you have four or five books of people that can say nice things about you, mm -hmm. you know, which is huge when you need references or when you're applying for jobs. Um, and it's also really good, you can go to your swim coach and hand him the SAC booklet to sign, and he can say, wow, I, I, I didn't know you volunteered down at the East End Cooperative Ministry. Yeah. He can then put that in his recommendation for you so they hear it again, or it gives him an appreciation as well. So it helps not just with the diploma program, but just with the education overall. The other big factor that comes in in the 10th grade year is what's called the personal project. And what the personal project is, is the students are each encouraged to create something that they are passionate about, that they are interested in. And there really is no limit. We have had people choreograph a dance. We had someone um, create their own Irish cookbook. Someone made a boat, and I don't mean like a little boat, I mean like a, a boat that held people and would float on water. Um, <laughs> like it, was, it was someone uh, sewing dresses, um, doing volunteer work, creating volunteer organizations, participating in them. And once you're done, you have to write a paper evaluating what you've done and how it's impacted you, what you learned from it, what mistakes you've made, how did you overcome your mistakes, was this a worthwhile thing or not. And that paper, it's a 10-page paper, I mean, no, I guess they've cut it down a little bit. It's like an eight-page paper that talks about, this was my goal, these were the sources that I used, this is what happens, this is what I looked up to find my information. This is how I used what I learned. 
And then finally, what happened that it is built in nicely to that extended essay that happens at the, at the end of the uh, 12th grade year. So again, that's another thing that kind of works that in. Um, again, because there's so much project-based learning that goes on and everyone has to be a little more independent, we start working on that in the sixth grade year. So there's lots of projects that come across starting in sixth grade. I see, give me two seconds. Um, there are lots of projects that come across, and this is to develop those skills. So for example, a sixth grade project has it pretty much day by day. Day one, you've got to do this. Day two, you've got to do this. Day three, you've got to do this. Day four, you've got to do this. And if you do this, you'll be done. Then the next year, seventh grade, a little bit's taken away. The student maybe has to go two, three days doing what needs to be done to build those skills. Because if you're going to do that diploma, that's a lot of time management that you really need to do. And if you're not going to do the diploma, if you're going to get through college, mm -hmm. or you're going to start your own business, time management is key. We start with that at this time so that students are able to really develop those skills. And the other benefit is that when you're doing projects, if there's something your child is really interested in, they can go way deep with it. They can really focus on something and get a lot more out of it than maybe someone who's not as interested in, th in that. So there's a lot more student-directed learning so in a way that they can follow their passion as well, even before they get to the personal project. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Yes, you mentioned about 